Okay. It's time to learn how to run some numbers. Excited? Excited. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna have to come on. Oh, actually, yeah, maybe. You can just talk back. I'm gonna be in your way though. Okay. Just, I'm not gonna be here. So, obviously, learning how to run your numbers is like the fundamental piece of getting into real estate. Your numbers are your most important part of investing. And that's why when we say like, you know, real estate can be like, residential real estate can be emotional. If you're an investor, you're not emotional at all. Everything is based on your numbers. So this is, it's very simple when it comes down to it, but can be tricky to get right. Cause you have to get your numbers right for a deal to work. So, this will also be useful actually when, like I said, when you're going to talk to investors, because at least you'll be able to show them how you run your numbers and what your system is. Like Jeff said, you're not just like buying a house that needs some work, putting some work into it, and then hoping in the end that it's going to make you some money. This is something that you can say, Hey, this is how I'm buying houses. You were going to show you kind of like a quick shorthand on like that you can actually give somebody to be like, this is how napkin I run. Numbers. Yeah. Napkin numbers. Um, so that you can be like, Hey, this is my system. This is how I buy houses. And this is how, what I'm going to work with pretty much every time that I'm buying a house. So obviously this is for flips specifically and numbers are different depending on what area you're in, but these are specifically for flipping. Uh, so we'll go over some of the basic pieces of running your numbers so that you have an understanding kind of of the, what pieces are involved in the formula, your ARV is your absolute most important one. So this is your after repair value. Uh, this is the one that you absolutely, absolutely need to get right. And it can be very tricky to find an ARV sometimes. Uh, so basically what this means is it's very simple. It's what the property is going to be worth after you renovate it. So this is what you're hoping to sell your property at. Uh, Typically what we'll do to find an ARV is we will look at things like uh, Redfin and then what's the other one? House Sigma. House Sigma. Newly in Ottawa. So there's, it's limited on where. Yeah. So these are websites. So you, then... they're free to make accounts on, so they don't cost any money. And you're able to basically make, man, your writing is so nice. Thank you. <laughs> It's so much nicer than mine. That's why I'm writing. I don't know. Uh, you're basically able to put in like pretty basic search criteria and you're able to see what's for sale, but also what's for sold or what's for sold, what has been sold in that area um, in the last like week, month, three months, six months, year, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Normally you want the last three to six months. Keep in mind the last three to six months in Ottawa have been insane and the houses were going for way over asking and unrealistic numbers so be very careful with the time period that you're looking at especially right now yeah as we as we move forward and things actually stabilize a little bit better you'll be able to go back to that three to six months just look at it and take it with a grain of salt i guess yeah it's a bit tough to find after repair values right now it's good to know sort of where, where the market has been in the last couple of months. And this will help you with your ARV. Um, but yeah, definitely take some caution because things were selling for really high in the last like three to six months. So it's, it's a bit tricky right now, but if you keep that in mind, it'll help you. Uh, so the other place you can get these comps to figure out your ARV is realtors. The tough part with realtors is they're actually not, in their training, I don't believe they're taught what an after repair value is. Uh, in our experience, a lot of realtors don't know what that means. So you might have to do some teaching with a realtor on what an after repair value is, because if you ask for ARB comps, they'll send you comps on the current value of the home, which is not what you want. You don't really care about that. So you want what the house is going to be worth. Uh, when it comes to finding a good comp, for an after repair value, you basically want it to be the same house, but in a different spot and updated. So you want to obviously have the same number of bedrooms, same number of bathrooms. Um, it has a garage. Yeah. So garage, no garage. Is it like a high ranch? Is it two floors? 
Um, does it, how much property is it on? Like, is it on an acre? Is it on half an acre? Is it just like a small little lot? Um, like you're really trying to basically find a, like a very similar house in, in the same neighbor neighborhood. So for like in Ottawa, you wouldn't want to be finding a house, like looking at a house in Barhaven and your comp is in Orleans. Cause that wouldn't make any sense. You want it to be in Barhaven and then, you know, specifically, you know, cause it's kind of like old Barhaven, new Barhaven. So you want it to be even in old Barhaven if possible. So we try to like zoom kind of in where the, the property is. And like within a couple of blocks, hopefully there's a good comp there. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you want that house to be updated. So you're going to, another, another thing you can do is look at like, how is it updated and how am I going to get my, like, can I get my property basically to that point? So that's how you're going to find your, um, your good comps for an ARV. And then basically you're going to look at those, see where they've sold and then you know, kind of make an average of it, I guess, like kind of look within the range that they've been selling. Typically we'll go to like the lower end of that range just to be safe. We want to be very conservative when we're running our numbers. Yeah. So if like one year comps went for like 800, one went for like 815, one went for like 825, we'll stay closer. Like eight will be our ARV just because we want to be, be safe with it. Have a little bit of a cushion. Yeah. So ARV is probably your most important number because it's your starting point. Uh, any questions on ARV? No, um, basically it's just good because it's, it's a, you start there because you basically work backwards from it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly so, it. and we'll show you that in a second. Um, so ARV, very important one. And then other things that you have, obviously your rental costs, which at the beginning, you know, you'll have to kind of, you, you can talk to some contractors to kind of get an idea of what certain things will cost. Uh, but we're going to give you a percentage to work with uh, to start. And then as you go, you'll get a better idea of, you know, what a kitchen costs, what a bathroom costs, that kind of stuff. Um, so you have your rentals, you have your holding costs. So that's going to be the, part of it's going to be the, the cost of your money. So you're going to be paying interest on whatever money you borrowed to do the project. So that would be like your mortgage and then also if you had investor funds to raise the down payment for it, you'll be paying interest on, on that as well. So you yeah. want to take it, take all of that into consideration. Yeah. Um, and knowing so how long the holding, project, sorry? All right, so you're saying holding costs is like an umbrella term for? Yeah, so if you have your holding, right. you're gonna have cost of your money so your borrowed money, your mortgage, you're gonna have just regular regular old bills, your water, your gas, hydro. Mm -hmm. And this, again, you need to know how long are you holding it for? So roughly how long is your project going to take? And that needs to include your closing period. So it's not just how long you're, like if the project's gonna take two to three months, you also need, say, two to three months for a closing, right? Because as soon as when you sell the house, it's not gone. You're still holding it for another couple of months. Yeah, so that part, this is just kind of rough numbers. Typically, I don't know, 30, 60, 90 days for closing. 90 is pretty long. Yeah, we'll, we'll run ours though at six months typically. Yeah, for the, for the entire for project. For the entire thing. Renovation though, if it's a very quick lipstick renovation, it might only take two months to do it but your contractor is going to be the one that's going to give you how long is the project going to take. And that should be, we'll get to that later, but that should be in a contract. Yeah. So you're going to have holding costs. Uh, basically that's like Jeff said, that's anything that comes up while you're holding the property. Um, but most commonly it's like the bills you have to pay to keep the house yeah. running and your money. But it doesn't include, it doesn't include renovations. No, no, that's, separate. that's a separate number that you're, yeah, uh, okay. that you're going to be working with. And then the last important number is your uh, closing costs. So you're gonna have land transfer tax on one side. And then on the other side, you have like your realtor costs. Buy and on the sell. Yeah. So you have, yeah, your lawyer, your lawyer costs. Um, if you're getting into a private mortgage, just kind of food for thought, you're gonna be paying their lawyer fees as well. 
the lender's lawyer fees. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Don't just look at your own lawyer costs if it's a private mortgage. But again, we can go into more detail on that when you when we actually need to. But just keep that in mind when you're running it. Um, land transfer. Land transfer on the buy. You only pay that when you buy it, not when you sell it. And then realtor costs, which is only when you sell. Yeah. The seller um, always pays the realtor fees. Yeah, and then sometimes on the selling side, you'll also have, like, if you stage your properties, um, then you'll have staging as well. So that those are kind of the basic numbers that you want to keep in mind when you're running your numbers and kind of how they work. Do you have any questions about any of those? Okay, so in summary, um, there's... Uh, reno costs. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm writing this down. That's why I'm. Uh, yeah, reno okay. costs. And, and we're going to summarize everything for you as well. Um, we just wanted to explain each individual yeah. item that we're going that we're talking about beforehand. Yeah. And then we can summarize the whole thing into kind. Of, it's going to be. Uh, it's, we call it nap napkin numbers, but it'll be a percentage based. Um, yeah. Way of running your numbers, and it's it's a solid system. So rental costs, holding costs, and closing costs. Yeah, exactly. And then under each and of those things, there's little costs. Yeah, so there's little things that are involved in each one. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, like, if you get stuck anywhere when you're running your numbers, just let us know and we can kind of help you if you're forgetting something. But the way we're going to have you run your numbers to begin with actually doesn't really involve going into that much detail. It's just good to know what each category involves. Mm -hmm. So the first way that we're going to teach you how to run your numbers is uh, like Jeff had mentioned called napkin numbers. So this is something very quick that if you're talking to an, the idea with the napkin numbers is you can literally like, if you're at dinner or something, you can take a napkin and write the, like write this down really quickly and like show them on a napkin is why it's called yeah. napkin numbers. Cause your investors also, probably won't want too much detail about all of the renovations that you're doing. They just want to know a rough number on how much is the renovation is going to cost, right? Yeah. Especially when you get into more high net worth individuals, they don't want all of the nitty gritty details. They just want to know that you have a system that you can follow and that you know your numbers and your numbers actually make sense for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the place that we're going to have you sort of start running your numbers. We've sort of tailored them a little bit to Ottawa specifically, but this is where we sort of, this is where we started. And I think you it's a, have a good grasp on this. Yeah. So. It's a good base to have. So don't you, do you want to go over the, uh, yeah, sure. So you're going to start with your ARV. ARV just, just for reference is going to be a hundred percent when we get into this. So you need to know what your ARV is to start. As you said, you kind of work backwards from there, but you're going to have your purchase price. Typically what you're looking for is to purchase between 40 and 60% of your ARV. Um, so we, if we were, do you want to go right into no, we'll numbers? Do that after. We'll do that after. Okay. Just do them all. Okay. So then you're going to have your rental cost. And you're going to renovate that up to the 75% mark. And this is, so this is a range because it depends on how much work the property needs. And how much you, of a discount you can get on the property. Yeah. So ideally, if a property needs a lot of work, you're going to be closer to the 40% range. If it's a very basic co like cosmetic flip, you're going to be closer to that 60% range. So you want the property like the, the condition of the property to be sort of reflected in in that range because obviously when you're doing your rentals you're always getting it up to 75 percent. so if you have like if you're buying a property at 60 percent, but it needs a whole bunch of work and you're trying to get it to 70 percent, that's going to be really tough it'll be yeah it'll be a very tight renovation budget that you have to make all of the changes that you may need to do yeah does that make sense so far um, so you've got your renovations up to 75%, your closing and holding is going to bring you, that's about 10%. So that's going to bring you to the 85% mark. 
So that again, that's going to be everything that we that we had talked about previously. Um, and then you have your basically you end up with your ARV or profit margin. So that's going to bring you to the hundred percent, which in this case is basically a fifteen percent profit margin. So this is a good okay. way of figuring out what you need to buy a property for. Because as soon as you look at a property, you can say, okay, this is this is what I can make this property. Like the, this number is my ARV. I need to buy it at 40 to 60%. So this is what I need to purchase this property at. So it's a really quick way to be like looking on MLS or off market or whatever and find that ARV, figure out what you can pay for it. You can kind of compare that to what it's, to what they're asking for it. And if like, if it's going to work, if that or not, or you know exactly what you need to offer on that property. So are we going to do a real life example? We're going to do like, we're just going to use like a 500. Yeah. 500. Yeah. 500 500 K. Yeah. So okay, just are you, you're good with these percentages. Can I raise them? Yeah, or replace them with numbers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's just say as my marker dies here, 500,000 is your after repair value. So in order to buy that, between 40 and 60 cents on the dollar or per percent, whatever. Let's say you can get this house for 250 K. And that makes sense for your reno. That, just kind of that, split the difference. Yeah. Just, just to use these numbers. So that's going to be 50, 50%, right? Your reno cost is one, what was it? One twenty five. 125. So that's going to be bringing you to that 75% mark, right? And then what was the last one? I had this written down before. Oh yeah. 50 K because it's 10%. That is 10% of your 500 K. Thank you. So that brings you to your 85%. And then your profit margin was 75 K on this. Right, so that brings you, if you add all this up, that should bring you to 500k. Yeah. I think so, unless we, unless we mess up our math no, somewhere. Right. <laughs> so, just for purposes of understanding, um, 200,000 plus 125 plus 50. If you can get it for two hundred thousand, that's great. Oh, that's, that's even better. <laughs> that, that's even better if you can get it for two hundred. But for this, we did fit. We did fifty percent. Yeah. Just to be in the middle of it, right. so that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Two fifty. So again, it's fifty percent of the ARV, bringing you to seventy-five percent of the ARV. Eighty-five percent. Fifteen percent. Um, yeah, cause that's, you're right. 75,000 profit margin. Yeah. Okay. It's a good payday. <laughs> <laughs> and this is on the low end in Ottawa. So, uh... yeah, but then, but then you gotta pay back everybody plus some, but that's, that's but there. that's in your closing or your holding costs, yeah. right? So your cost of borrowing um, and all of your lawyer fees, realtor fees and everything is going to be taken care of within this 50k. Yeah. So that in theory would include your down payment too. So every, so your down payment would be included in your purchase price. Yeah. Because your down payment goes towards the purchase of the home, right? So that's all included. Yeah. So you'd put down, you know, But what if you're using other people's money for your down payment? That's, that's okay. okay. That's part of your holding cuz any so any money that you are like whatever money you're using and you're paying to use that money is included in your holding, well, in your holding. Okay. Okay. If you, so this can change a little bit if you bring on maybe a partner, if you're like doing a joint yeah. venture or something, but that's a whole other, we won't go but over that today. <laughs> even, even, if, even if you do though, when you bring on a joint venture partner, 
rather than just a lender, you're splitting your profit margin with them. So you're then splitting whatever, you, let's say you did 50-50, you're splitting this 15K 50-50. So, yeah, so what I was saying was everything ideally, like if all goes as according to your napkin numbers, should be in this area here. This is your profit. This is what you're putting in your pocket. Well, minus taxes or whatever, but that's what you're putting in your pocket. Okay. Okay. So any questions, any more questions about running numbers? Um, no, I mean, what if you want to have a higher profit margin target? <laughs> so that's where this comes in. Yeah. <laughs> So, right? so you need to get good at negotiating. If you can bring that down to 200K. Now you're making 125. Then your numbers change, right? So this, this could stay the same. This could stay the same. But I don't know what 200K of, what is that? Is that 40? Yeah. Roughly, maybe? Yeah. Ish? Not exactly. Even, not even ish. Not even ish. Exactly. <laughs> need a calculator. So you're buying it at 40, 40 cents on the dollar, essentially. So now this goes up to, okay, I think, 25%. Yeah. And if you're conservative, so what we do a lot of the time is we're very conservative on our ARV. I we're, need a new marker. We're conservative. Actually, I have one in my hand. Never mind. Um, we're conservative on the reno, so we'll always, like, overestimate what our reno is going to be. Uh, and that could potentially mean that you get a higher margin. You can also get into like, if you get into more luxury flips as well, then that's where profit margins can also increase because right. you you're selling now a one million one point five million dollar home, so this will increase. Yeah, because yeah. keep in mind that it's it's a percentage the way that we're looking at it now. Yeah. So yeah, it's fifteen exactly. percent of your ARV. It's all relative, yeah. Yeah, add a zero and add a zero. Yeah. So yes. that's where like you, you could put potentially increase your margins. We are gonna talk a little bit we want you to practice this method, but we're gonna talk a little bit about how we've kind of I yeah. guess adjusted this a little bit, just so that now that we've had have a couple of projects under yeah. our belt and we know kind of what a kitchen costs, what like what rentals cost and what holding uh, costs. And even if you don't, you can you're gonna be working with contractors and having them come through the building with you and give you quotes. So that way you're not playing that guessing game and getting yourself into a situation where your renovation now brings you to like ninety five percent and now you've killed the entire deal.